Are you preparing to install a drip system or simply add to or replace some drip system components and you want to use quality products and techniques? In this video, I'll show you the best professional grade product and where to get them. I will also go over some repair tips and discuss components like pressure regulators and filters. Tom Lanier here with Sprinkler Pros. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video to get your free download to help you identify your drip system components. At the end I'll show you some handy repair tips. I am mostly discussing products designed for residential and light commercial use. This is the bulk of the market. In a previous video that I will provide the links for, I showed a brief overview of the components. In this video, I'll show you the best professional grade drip components on the market and why they're the best. Know this about the availability of drip system components. They are mostly supplier dependent. What I mean is that suppliers don't typically give you much if any choice in brands and models of each component. I will offer a few items through my resources page linked in the description section below the video. I will not be going over components used in connecting drip systems to faucets. This is covered in the video shown here. This video is just about systems connected to sprinkler valves. I will be going over more detailed how-tos in upcoming videos. Over 30 years I have dealt with jillions of drip systems and have seen the good and the bad. First, I will begin with some concepts and principles to lay the foundation here. Like, this is drip tubing, not hose. This is a garden hose. Dirty water. I'll begin with a preface regarding your water supply because this is very important with drip systems. Because of the small ports that water passes through with drip system components, they can easily clog from calcification from seemingly clean city water, but the warning here is for dirty water sources such as well water, lake water, creek water, pond water, or gray water. I discussed this further in another video I am linking here. If you use one of these dirty water sources, I highly recommend you follow this link and watch that video. Next, I'd like to say, water is water. It doesn't really matter how you get it there to the plants. There are several ways to get water to your landscape or your veggie garden, but drip systems have become a favorite for attempted water conservation efforts and avoiding weed promotion. Both can be accomplished if designed and installed properly. Many people are weary of the seemingly constant maintenance involved with drip systems. What maintenance is that? Well, people stepping on the emitters or other components and breaking them off, so creating geysers or flooding. The summer heat eventually cracking the tubing, requiring a total replacement of the tubing. Emitters or spray nozzles clogging, requiring replacement. Gophers or dogs chewing through the tubing. Shovels or hedge trimmers slicing through the tubing. Roots swallowing the tubing and pinching it off. Tubing getting pulled tight around trunks. This being said, many people are opting to go back to standard sprays in their landscape and foregoing that constant frustration. But if you're still wanting a drip system, then here we go. So what's our ultimate goal? Are we trying to get water to the leaves of the tree? Well, sort of in a roundabout way, but really we're putting water to the roots of the plants or trees. For a general principle, picture the root system as a mirror of what you see above ground regarding the width and depth of the roots. For the long-term health and strength of the specimen, we want the roots to grow as wide and deep as possible, so we don't want to focus our long-term watering at its base. More on that in a future video. Every part is a potential point of failure. So my mantra is, the fewer parts the better. Best practices. 
Here are a few best practices that will make your system perform best, last longer, and make maintenance, inspections, and repairs much easier. First, keep the drip tubing above the ground. Don't bury it or install it under weed cloth. Said another way, keep it above ground and on top of weed cloth if you install that. If it's buried or underneath weed cloth, it can be swallowed and pinched off by roots. Chewed by gophers, shovels can go cut through it. Additions or subtractions to the tubing can't be done. And inspections will be impossible since you can't see it. If you don't want the tubing to be seen, then put something like bark or mulch over the top of it. Just leave the end of the tubing exposed for a reference and to allow for flushing the line once in a while. Keep it away from the base of young plants or trees so the trunk doesn't eventually swallow the tubing as it matures. Tubing. Secondly, be sure you use professional grade half inch tubing, which is this in diameter. It's too hard to say. The home centers and hardware stores stock a smaller tubing and is not compatible with the professional grade tubing and fittings carried on professional irrigation tech trucks like mine. Next, be sure you don't overtax your lines. I've seen systems with nearly a thousand feet of tubing on one line that is barely performing. Many of the emitters aren't putting out any water. By the book, half inch tubing can only handle a hundred feet laterals. Picture a lateral as a branch off of a tree. There are some design techniques I will show in an upcoming video showing how to calculate how much water is being used on each lateral and how many hundred foot laterals you can have on each sprinkler valve. For now, I will provide a worksheet that you can download through the free downloads link below. If you need many laterals off of one valve, then the best practice is to have the sprinkler valve or PVC pipe leading from it installed at the center of the area you are irrigating. That way you can run the laterals off of that and keep the lengths of the tubing relatively the same. Avoid pushing water uphill due to pressure loss. More in the design series. Jute staples. These are called jute staples since they are, were originally designed to hold down jute cloth on hillsides, but they are commonly called drip stakes. Components. At the water source. We'll start at the sprinkler valve or other water source if you're using a different water source like a hose bib, then see my other drip system for veggie beds videos for tips on that. Whether you have an above ground valve like this anti-siphon valve or a below ground valve like this inline valve, you'll normally want a Y filter and a pressure regulator. I say normally because if you have a low water pressure situation, then a pressure regulator could actually not be recommended. There are factors to consider that I'll go over in an upcoming video, but for now I will give a very general statement here. You should be running at least 60 PSI on your irrigation system to warrant a drip system pressure regulator. The Y filter needs to be accessible and cleaned once in a while based on the clarity of your incoming water source. There are many of these on the market, but my favorite is the Hunter HFR series. It comes in several different configurations based on inlet and outlet sizes. One reason I like it is that it's one complete unit and the Y filter is straight instead of pointed down like the rest of them. This makes taking it apart so much easier in tight spaces. Most other manufacturers sell the regulator and Y filters separately, which is fine, but having them as one unit makes for one less leak point and a bit quicker installation. Next, the best way to attach the drip line to the source is to use this configuration. A pipe thread by hose thread adapter and a hose thread by compression swivel connector is used, or this swivel T. My favorite fittings manufacturer is NDS. 
not the house brands that many major suppliers force on you. NDS's fittings are designed with an easy grip outer shell, a deep contour for the tubing to slip into making it so much easier. Next, decide whether you're going to use drip sprays, drip emitters, or this tubing that has emitters built in. Avoid mixing these on the same line as they require different watering times. If you use drip sprays, know that there are nozzles that spray different distances available and are color-coded. Drip sprays are available in quarter, half, and full spray along with a center strip special pattern. Be sure to use a drip stake at the base of the drip spray riser to hold it in place. I don't use flag emitters because they clog too easy, break off easy, and don't have adjustable flows like this cool little device. Before I show you this, I will show you a non-adjustable alternative that is also professional grade. This is my favorite pro-grade non-adjustable emitter. It's available in six different flow rates. This is called an adjustable emitter and is my all-time favorite emitter since it's so versatile. It's available as a 180 degree or 360 degree model. It is fully adjustable from zero to 10 gallons per hour under perfect conditions. You can turn it completely off if you don't need it and if you think it's clogged, simply spin it off while the water is on and flush it out. Also, when you need the spray at a higher trajectory, don't bend the metal stake Instead, install the stake at the angle you need it to be. If you install the tubing on ground that has even the slightest slope to it, be sure to install the emitters on the high side of the plant or tree so the water can drain down to the plant or tree. Tech line. This is commonly called tech line due to the name given it by a major manufacturer. It's super easy to install. Just lay it down and you're done. The emitters are spaced depending on what you need. The 12 inch spacing is the most popular. Since it has built in pressure regulators at each emitter, it can handle up to 300 foot laterals. Don't exceed that or it won't work. Be sure to do the math on the downloadable worksheet too to be sure you don't overload your line. Also be sure to follow the rules of thumb sheet to understand how long it should run. If you have situations where you need to turn off certain laterals, like if you aren't using every veggie bed this year, this is called an inline ball valve. It can be used to turn the water on and off, and it can be used to regulate the water flow to a lateral as well. It's also available in a quarter inch version. If you need to plug a hole in the half inch tubing or at the end of quarter inch tubing, then use a goof plug. This may still allow leaking, but if there's something under the water, it's okay. As mentioned earlier, be sure you use a crimp at the end of each tubing so you can flush it once in a while. It's also great for checking your water flow and pressure if there's a problem. You can also add on more tubing there if needed. There are components like flush caps that are cool, but then you can't easily add on. Don't install anything so close to the end that you can't slip the figure eight fitting off as needed. Use this handy cutter to cut your tubing and use pliers to insert goof plugs. Okay, now where can you get some of these awesome drip system of components? Just click on the resources link below and I will send you in the right direction. Remember to get your free downloads, including this one I told you about at the beginning of the video. This free download has photos of the most common prograde drip system components and the drip line worksheet. Just click the free downloads link down below. Next video will be about programming concepts for summer and droughts. What are you going to use your drip system for? Veggie beds, landscaping, or something else? How did this video help you? Let me know in the comments section below. See you next time.